Hey everybody, my name is Chase Pipes and you're watching Chasing History, brought to you by American Digger Magazine and Smoky Mountain Relic Room and we're ah, back at the Texas Three Time Museum with my good buddy Andre Luan. Andre, dude, thank Thanks. you for having us. Thank you. This is an incredible museum located in Hillsboro, Texas and it is literally Texas through time, the history of Texas throughout all of history that we know of. Andre's got an excellent museum set up back here, some incredible displays. Andre, tell us about what kind of displays you've got going on here at your yeah, museum. Yeah, well we could spend all day in here, but really I just want to hit some high points. But really what we try to showcase is fossils from the oldest period of time in Texas to the most recent, including some artifacts from the Paleo-Indians and, and Indians. Wow, so you've got basically in, in this building, you've got fossils, literally, and artifacts of all of known time in the state of Texas. Absolutely, and we're adding more all the time. Dude, that's so, so cool. Yeah, we, we feel like it's really important to tell that story with all fossils of every size and, and type. So from plant fossils, invertebrate fossils, especially echinoderms that don't really get appreciated the way they should. So those are urchins, but we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, all right, cool. Well, let's not waste any time. Show us what you got yes, there. So we have some fossils here from around the world. We've got some from Ukraine, but what I want to focus on is fossils from our native Texas and our region. Here we have a trilobite fossil. This is from uh, Oklahoma, and it's called a dicronaris. This has got horns and these crazy long genal spines. This is the classiest trilobite in America. So that's wow. one that was actually self-collected that I donated to the museum, and uh, that's part of making the collections grow. So you've got, so, so you were actively in the field collecting this stuff for the museum yourself. Absolutely, yeah. So everything that I've collected in my life up until this point. I gave it to the museum when we started wow. so that we would have a seed collection and I still actively collect as do many of our, our employees and volunteers. Wow, that's yeah. great. So well, moving on down here we've got this awesome urchin plate. This is one of the iconic Pennsylvania and Texas fossils. These urchins are called Archaeocideris. They're from a locality called Brownwood, uh, Brownwood Spillway. These are huge. They were my, uh, collected kind of commercially for a, for a short time, about 10, 20 years ago, and uh, were very popular. And you can see why, because wow. they're preserved so nicely. When you find urchins like that with their spines still associated and attached, that means they were bur buried very rapidly. So like a single event? Absolutely. Wow. So they probably were covered in some kind of storm deposit or underwater landslide, and uh, it makes for an incredibly well-preserved fossil. So it was a crappy day for them, a good day for us. Absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. A good day. You yeah. know, some 200 million years later. Nice. So, um, life began in the oceans. Uh, I think we can all agree Which is there. what we just saw. Absolutely. Okay. And we move into the Permian. So the Permian red beds of Texas are what we celebrate here in our state as kind of, this is our, this is our thing to be proud of. Museums and institutions have been coming here to collect these fossils for well over 100 years. So what is the Permian? The Permian oh. is, uh, it's the time in history when tetrapods, four-legged animals, really start to diversify. We get reptiles, we get amphibians, then we get these weird mixed up critters that are like synapses, mammal-like reptiles, oh, wow. and parareptiles, which are like reptile-like amphibians. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so. so in Texas, this is where like the most preserved fossils from that period are. Absolutely. The Texas red beds represent the best uh, complete snapshot of the Permian, lower and upper. Uh, yeah, so we have all the iconic animals that you recognize, the Demetrodons, the Adaphosaurs, the Eriops, and things like that. So we have a few casts on display here. Okay. Uh, this is Demetrodon lumbatus. Uh, this is probably the iconic fossil, you know, it's displayed here. That is my... so cool, dude. Look, it's got a sail on its back. It's got a sail on its back. Awesome. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're not exactly sure what that was used for. There's a couple of theories, thermoregulation, sexual, you know, attraction. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, no one appendage um, has just one use. So, cool. Yeah, so the sale, who knows? That's we're awesome. Going to continue to learn things. If we move back here, let me step in here and show you this cool critter right here. This is called Eriops megacephalus. Whoa. And, uh, this is one of the large amphibians that lived here in Texas during the Permian. And you can see, this guy was kind of built like a tank. He's got big sharp teeth, he's got this large mouth, so he could kind of swallow prey whole. Wow, look at these species! I mean, this is insane, yeah. dude! This is nuts! 
I mean, you, and you don't see these fossils really from very many places in the world other than here in Texas. Uh, they are known from a few other places, but nowhere else in the world are they as well preserved and as diverse as in the Texas Redbacks. Wow. This little poster we have here kind of shows some of that diversity. And if you look at the shapes of these animals, it's like a bad Jim Henson movie. What? <laughs> I mean, this is like that's awesome. the dark crystal meets SLC punk and some... Uh, that's great. Yeah, that's true imagination. Yeah. Nice. Uh, but these are animals that, that actually lived here in the state of Texas. Wow. So we have some replicas on display here so people can kind of see what these animals look like in their entire. In their entire. Yeah. But this case right here is one that we're really proud of. These are mostly real specimens in here. So this is the real deal. This is the real deal. So you've got you've got specimens on display so people can get and understand the entirety of the species, but you've also got the actual fossils. The actual yourself. fossils, right? Ah, that's awesome. We have skulls in here. We wow. have partial skeletons. And you can see we have the articulated hands and feet of wow. several different species. So this kind of shows you the real diversity of the Permian that we're talking about on that poster right there. Yeah. Now, where do you get a lot of these fossils? Are you, you're actively out going out yeah. and digging this stuff up, right? Yes, we have leases. Uh, we have permission with certain landowners to go out and collect in these uh, fossil-rich areas out in West Texas. Wow, that's wow. incredible. How often are you adding to science? Well, we, uh, we're finding new stuff all the time, and uh, I'm gonna pull out a skull and show you something that is really scientific. Yeah, let's check that out. What? This skull right here is called what? Bartoloma, and it probably represents the best specimen of its kind ever oh. found from the location that it was collected. Holy crap. Dude, that's so cool, man. Look at this guy. Wow. Oh, whoa, what's going on here with the jaw? Well, this is actually both jaws, and one has drifted over up against the other one. Whoa, so in death, this jaw would have been here, right. and then it just kind of drifted over and then got covered up in fossilized. Absolutely. Whoa, that's so cool, man. That, all right, so what's, what's awesome about this species? Well, this is a very uh, little understood animal, okay. and with the completeness of the skull and the level of detail of these individual skull plates, the fact that it's completely inflated, that it has both jaws associated with it, makes it super important for cat scanning and 3D imaging oh, and understanding it. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of times when you find skulls, they might be nice, but they're crushed or they're distorted, you know, but this one is perfectly inflated. So this is a lot of important information about what these animals really look like wow. and how their skulls work. So is that something that you're doing? You're taking fossils like this and you're taking and getting cat scans of them and sharing that information? Uh, absolutely. We are working with researchers to get these into those types of situations and we have a session this fossil into our museum collection so it's available for any researcher to come and study. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So real quickly, if people want to come and study with you guys, how do they contact you? Uh, absolutely. Well, they can call the museum at 254-262-3466. Uh, that's 254-262-3466. That spells dino if you're into that. Also, we just uh, locked down our, our internet domain so you can reach us at texasthroughtime.org. Nice, man. Nice. So, what, what, tell us a little bit about this species. What's so, you know, what, what's going on here? Where would it have lived? How, how old? So, we got the Permian, but what, what is, what, what period is the Permian? This guy is from a very narrow snapshot of time to about 280 to 270 million years. And this is from the Fisher Fill cave deposits that we were taking a look at earlier. Okay, so this is a cave species. Yes, absolutely. Oh, so this is an opportunity to check out species that lived inside of caves or around caves. Right, so these caves would have had uh, skylights and traps and openings and so these animals were able to pass freely from outside to inside and kind of use them as shelter and maybe even hunt actively inside. Whoa. So this, uh, this is a beautiful specimen and hopefully we're going to learn a lot about this species from this skull. That's, that's cool dude. So like I said this is our case of Permian that's mostly real fossils okay. but we come to the end of the Permian and a terrible catastrophic event known as the Great Dying. This is when uh, nearly 98% of life on Earth, Earth became extinct. So at the end of this case right here represents a stark contrast of diverse life to an arid landscape with very few animals. To um, nothing. Right. Just, just boom. What are the, so does this fossil represent that? Yes, absolutely. So this is in a mudstone from a lake, lake system in the early Triassic. 
And uh, this is a footprint of one of these primitive amphibians that survived the catastrophic extinction wow. event. Right. So no. That, so you've got the transition yeah, too. Yeah, we've got the transition here too. That is nuts, man. Yeah, we've got some wonderful fossils from the environment that kind of show the different things that were happening. Here's some ripples from a lake bed. Whoa! Uh, so the, this this is what you would call like a trace fossil. This is a trace fossil. Right, so what this is, I know you guys have like looked in, in, in underwater, you know, shallow water, and seen these little ripples just from the waves going up. This is that what you see fossilized. So you can actually see. Look, it's like looking under the water. You know, 290 million years ago. Yeah. That is so cool, man. That's awesome. We've got some other. Really interesting trace fossils. This is from some kind of insect or invertebrate. Not really sure, but you can Whoa! see, you know, he was doing something there in the soft sediment. That's nuts. Nice. Like, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Right. Whoa. So, you know, life. Is that like where it would dry up and get uh, shallow? You know how you would see the, the slick mud kind of fold in on itself? Absolutely, yeah. That's so cool. Ah, neat. So what we have here are some trace fossils from uh, northeastern New Mexico. And these are really important because regionally, these represent part of our story. Dinosaurs didn't know borders. These ancient animals traveled all over. So the continents shifted and oceans, uh, you know, ingressed and egressed. And uh, so these animals are local uh, to our story. Wow. Well, here, this is a really cool piece. Let me step back here so you can see what's going on. This is awesome because it represents a whole little family of critters. You can see there's some baby tracks inside the adult tracks, oh, and you can see them all traveling along together. That's nuts, man! Yeah. And wow! This is a really cool track here in the center with these three toes. It looks like a modern bird, you know, like a big turkey track. Yeah. This represents the first bipedal dinosaur. Wow. So this animal was called Coelophysis. So where you get in the Permian, you got four legs going on. Right. In the Jurassic, it's moving to all of a sudden two legs, yes, bipeds. Yes. That's cool. So we go man. from tetrapods to bipedal dinosaurs. Wow. Right. That's nuts. What's the teeth in this thing? Those teeth are from the uh, this animal right here. It's called a phytosaur. Phytosaurs belong to a group of animals called archosaurs, and they're the ancient uh, relatives of all modern living crocodiles and the dinosaurs. Wow, yeah. that's nuts. That and this cool. beautiful piece of petrified wood here is a piece of, uh, it represents a conifer tree from the Triassic period. Now, most tree species during the Triassic were conifers, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. But this is really an interesting development too as we're talking about things changing. So we had a lot of lepetodendron trees in the late Carboniferous period and early Permian. There weren't really any true trees. Okay. And once we get into the Triassic, we have the Aracaria species of conifers that you find in the uh, petrified forest. Okay. Stuff like that. So is this stuff that we would that you, we would associate with like pine trees and cones? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So they have they start to develop those resins and those waxy uh, waxy modified leaves and cones and okay. things like that. And back in the Permian, you were saying what? what Lepetodendron. Yeah. It's more of like a, a, a really fleshy fern type tree. Okay, so like a big giant nuts awesome fern. Right. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Yeah, neat, neat. So we're going to have a theme here. So at the end of the Triassic period, catastrophic as extinction event, times change, there's a shift change, there's some new kids on the block, and we're going to talk about those real quick. And in one spot, in one place, you can come and see not copies or replicas or whatever, but the actual fossils discovered by the actual people, you know, from stuff in Texas, right here. right here. Dude, tell people how they can find you, how they can come check this museum out. Well, first and foremost, if you live in Texas, come to Hillsboro. We're located at 110 North Waco Street in downtown, right on the square. Uh, you can find us online uh, via our Facebook page or our Instagram, at Texas Through Time. You can call the museum at 254 uh, 262-3466 and we just recently are getting our website going so you can uh, try texasthroughtime.org that's awesome guys this is definitely a trip worth taking and definitely a place worth seeing where you can actually meet the real people out in the field discovering this history andre hey. this is awesome man thank, thank you, you very much yeah. we got a lot more to show you guys stay tuned to the next episodes be sure to subscribe and like if you like it and history rocks Woohoo! Woohoo!